400 lights. That's the top tip. 64 windows. I actually priced it for a window. Yeah. I haven't had it yet, but people nitpicking. After I've started, said, look, I think you need new windows. But you're working to someone's budget, aren't you? Right, hello, it's Tuesday. My name's Matt. Uh, welcome back. What's joining you? Uh, you'll hopefully have seen some of the other videos, or maybe just go check those out now, you know, just so you can see what this channel's about. But essentially, it's about me doing jobs. Uh, it's the first day back off holiday. So, and I've not really hit the ground running. This is a new job I'm starting. I like some, I like to, my brain works better if I'm going back to a new job when I come off holiday. I don't know why, but that's, so I've lined this up for that. Um, and the idea was that this job, we see these windows here. The idea was what I thought when I turned up was I was going to be chopping bits out. Got to do all of them, got to take those out, service them, shoot them back in, make sure they open and shut for the painter. Got a few bits to do up on the faces as well. But basically what I normally do is I'll, I'll put a drill a hole or I'll put a multi-tool cut in until I find where it's not solid. I like to expose the tenons as well just to make sure they're in good nick. Uh, and I've done that on these two. I'm happy with that. I've actually got to take a bit out here though because this is rotten all the way through here. There's like a rotten band where this was touching that. And I think water's got in these joints over time and got into these bits. You can see I've scraped all the rot out of there. What I'll do is I'll put some hardener in there and then I will... Uh, I'm going to review this product up here, this Easy Care, whatever it's called. Anyway, it's up on the screen. Uh, I've been dying to use that. Makes it's supposed to make it a lot easier. However, this side, I'm going to need a bit more of that, or I'm going to spend about five grand on it because um, <laughs> that is like that's a lot of filler to put in there, and it's quite an expensive product. So yeah, I just couldn't really do anything about that. I was chopping and chopping and chopping. Um, and I don't know where it's coming from, but we've got what this this actually here. Left some this in. I've actually chopped some of this out, but it's this here, just to show you, is actually like that's mold. Well, that's spores, that's growth, like fungus. It's white and powder. I was always left to believe that that's dry rot. And when it's darker, there's some darker stuff there, that orange and spongy. Wet rot. But I've got both. I mean, that is soft as well, so I'll take a bit more of that out actually. Feel the spores on it, can't you? Pretty rank, really. But yeah, so I've got to remove some more of that. I've got to put fresh bits of timber in, unfortunately, and it's quite a lot. Um, I can't chop back anymore because I've got this glass, and they want to keep the glass in. They don't want, you know, obviously in an ideal world. So I've cut here. Got cut here. That's solid. So I came back down, cut here. This is actually in good nick. Um, don't know where, don't know how or why. I think I've got a funny feeling because it's three pieces of timber, and some of these windows were open as originally. I think water got in the joins. And run into some and not others and then sort of capillarated along the bottom um but yeah you were i've already i'm doing this on a price i've mentioned what i'm gonna you know what the plan was before i started and i've got her out after i've started and said look i think you need new windows but you're working to someone's budget aren't you and you know they, i think they've got a long-term plan for this house and new windows aren't on that at the moment um so yeah i'm just going to be here for about a week or so i've got to go around the whole house and do this um not ideal first day is it to be blindsided by something like that but yeah so i'm just going to jump on it now because i've still got i've only got a couple more hours left to do that side hopefully it's not going to end up looking like that side because that will be a bit, bit of a depressing not uh, morning for me tomorrow um yeah and then this easy care stuff or whatever it was i put on the screen that's going to go in these joints you know i've made sure they're solid i just dig the chisel in pull bits out so it's solid Put that in there yeah because we've got an issue really where we've got this bottom bit of timber i don't know if you can see it is it a different projection than that white bit of timber the black bit but not on all of it these windows have moved i think at one point they're all in one line you'd expect it or they've been filled flush with some two-part filler over time i don't know but making my life hard because I've got to cut and I cut a bit of rotten out the bottom of the white and then cut a bit of rotten out the black. I've actually got to put two bits back in at different on each section rather than just putting one long of it in. So it's making a bit of a and you can't can't get you know it'd be nice if I could get the tracks saw on there but I can't. Um I suppose I could put it on upside down couldn't I could have done that actually. Screwed it in. Well right, we'll see anyway. Right, I'll pick you up in a bit.
Oh, I just got to show you what I've actually done in the end. I was talking to the camera about what I was doing. I was like, yeah, just get a track saw out. So yeah, I just whipped a, whipped a cut line in there with the track saw. What, what I haven't done is done it straight end to end with a long rail. Um, what I've got is I've got an old rail that has got um, sacrificial holes in it. I didn't really want to put holes in my long rail, number one. Number two, that's not actually straight all the way across there. So I, I actually put a string on across and it just makes it look so far out. So I've just done each section because I've actually got to put, I've got to put like timber going that way anyway. So each one is its own bit and it's his own measurement as well, just to make that work. And then I'm doing the gate, no noise here, I'm doing the gate. Um, and I'll just show you the gate. I've had to chop in the hinges on the gate because it wasn't shutting right. She's got a few problems with it. I did give her a price, you know, like say whatever, £100 just to toodle with it. Um, what I've done, I can't remember, I haven't looked at the email, but anyway, what I've done is I've cut in all the rotten out. And I've just put a temporary bracing because I'm not going to piece any bits of timber in overnight. And I've, I've cut and I've cut and I've cut and that's a good word, isn't it? I've cut, um, there's no tenons in it. This gate is an odd one. It's just been made, I think. It, you know, that's not rebated in or anything. That's just butted up to the edge of this piece of timber. And then this bottom bit is rebated so that these panels were sitting on the top rails. No tenons on anything. And then the mid rail was like, just, it been put in afterwards, I think. And they put biscuit joints on it. And you still got the paint there, so the glue was never going to take. And there was the paint here, so the glue never took, and it just opened up. And uh, and he'd actually put expanding foam on the back as well. They're not done very well. It might have been done, might have been done on the on, you know on site sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. So I'm going to have that back on now. I've just chopped in a bit deeper, and I've drilled the post to the wall a bit more, just so it's just better really. Um, and then tomorrow I'll splice these bits in. And what I'll do is I'll splice a bit in there that goes over to there. It's glued and it carries that and it will screw into there. And I'll splice a little bit in here, which purely just takes a, a nail hole for the bead. That's all this bit does as well. But what I might do is I might break it up by running this rail in here, onto here, screw into there and then put a little bit in. It's just It'll be stronger than it. I mean, I will put them biscuit joints back in or a domino, but it'll be, it'll be stronger than that. Um, scrape the paint off obviously so the glue sticks but you see that sometimes people pa painting stuff before they PVA it uh, just doesn't stick does it um, yeah uh, and then even like this I see this is all if you can make that out but it's all twisted so that was rubbing so I've just shot the door in a bit more really that one's that one's cutting straight I don't know why it's not straight I don't know if someone's playing that on, I don't know, you know, he's, customers don't always tell you the truth anyway, do they? But that could have been, someone could have fucked up, someone could have messed around with that for uh, once once a year for the last 10 years, or it could have been fitted last year by an absolute amateur, I just don't know. Um, right, yeah, so tomorrow, I'm going to have all this fun, aren't we? I might just film me constantly cutting bits, what I'll do, because every bit is its own size, because nothing's straight. I'm just going to pick up a load of timber in the morning. I'm going to bring the table saw in, set up maybe under the gazebo based on the weather, and I'm just going to go hell for leather, splicing bits in. So I think I'll just film that. Um, yeah, can't really take you through much else. And then what I'll do is when I do a window, so each all these windows I'm going to take out, just the openers. I'm going to take out. I'm going to bring them down onto my bench this week, hopefully, and um, yeah, just make each window better sort of allowed two hours per window. Um, I was going to bring someone in to run up and down the stairs, but I guess I'll have to be doing it. Right, see you tomorrow. <clears throat> right, good morning, it's Wednesday morning. Um, I've just got here, so I'm, I've got to put my phone on charge. So what I'm going to do is, uh, just because you're going to get, I haven't had it yet, but people nitpicking. Some of the, I watch a lot of these sort of videos and people just like, like to say, have their say, which is fine, that's what it's about, it's about learning. But my first job today is to just go and make sure that like the timber i didn't really show much of it so if i get a chance today i'll show it it's all really strawy in places um not the stuff that's left but the stuff i've cut out so i just want to examine it a bit more now and just this is the point really where i go do i cut any more out i mean the, this side here this side is really neat but the first side it was so spongy and just like is my 
I don't know, I just didn't get the track saw out. I was just cutting a lot of it out by hand or the multi-tool and you don't get the neatest lines. So I'm just going to double check that now, make sure I've cut enough out. Make sure it's dried overnight. It should like, you know, it should, should be able to feel the timber have firmed up a little bit because it was kind of like damp where it's touching the wall. Um, and I've got some wet hot, uh, wet hot, wet rock um, hardener. What do you call it, Jobby? So I'm going to lash that on as well. We're going to DPM the bottom as well and i've got some silicon for that uh you know we're bought we're trying to buy as many years as we can we're not trying to we know this isn't going to see the property out um this is just a repair basically but i really want to do a good job of it because a it's in the village i live and b like i just feel like this feel like because of highlighters you probably have new windows i don't want my mindset to go oh i'm gonna like I've told you you have new, you know, you should have new windows. You're getting what you get. I, you know, I priced it as a repair, but I just think as I priced it a year ago and I priced it without actually inspecting the timber. I, I, you know, I stuck a screwdriver in and whatnot, but actually, there's bits that are just really, really hard, and there's bits that have been replaced. And um, and I think where it had been replaced, water had got in before, and nobody had dealt with the problem. By well, I'm hoping doing what I'm doing. I, I think. We're going to be using polyurethane PVA as well. I'm using the slow cure stuff because I find that's firmer when it foams up. Um, and we've got the benefit of time here. So what I'm going to do is I need to charge my phone. I'm going to get all this wet, I'm going to get wet rot done, get all the tools and everything set up. Probably get, hopefully get two coats of the wet rot on hard enough. Um, you know, just make sure that we're ready to go. And then by about 11 o'clock, I'll have, I'll just whack the, back on time lapse and just show me splicing it all back in. Yeah, I had to um, I had to cut you off unfortunately because I'm uh, I had to have the tripod in the sun to get it all in. Now I've just moved the van to try and get a bit more shade, but yeah. Um, so I've just cracked on with this bit. I just thought I'd show you how because like the carpenters amongst you will sort of be thinking, how are you going to get these to be sort of strong to each other? Well, because I can't mortise and tenon the. This is like a one piece with some plant on pieces there, which are the, the frames basically. So this is like a T piece that comes through, which obviously I had to chop the rotten out. Even if I manage to get one piece back in there or three pieces glued together, I'm not going to be able to mortise and tenon. So I'll basically cut a square section out, put in a bit of uh, 30, whatever that is, mil by uh, 110 mil, 100 by 110 planed. And I've pocket screwed it and glued it into these. That's kind of now going to be my tenons. And then I was hoping to sort of do something here. Because what the, the plan originally was to use the domino. But I haven't got any stability dominoes and I won't get a domino in because of the glass. Um, and then also there'll always be one I can't get in. So you see this one here, I couldn't even get that one in. So I had to pocket screw that way and I've dowled it. I mean, obviously it's got a load of glue in it and it's then fixed to the frame at the bottom and fixed down there. But I'm just trying to stop it twisting so it doesn't break the glass, you see. Um, and then the biggest problem I've got is each frame, each bloody frame, you probably can't see it there. It's all bowed and whipped. Each one's different. Um, so I've had to put this on. I've had to just quickly run the hand plane over this just to really... Get it somewhere straight and i'll sand it when it's done once i put the pegs in i'll do probably do the same thing here it's not too bad to be fair but yeah not the easiest um spicing these bits back in now probably won't film that i won't take too long so what i'm going to do out of this this stock here i'm going to cut some bits at um whatever that is say it's 40 mil cut three bits at 40 mil well there's two at 40 and one at 30 actually by the looks of it something like that anyway i'm going to cut some bits that go down I'll shape them to the back of there and just put some loads of glue behind it 
Yeah, that's all I can really do because it looks like it's going to be about 20. You can see the difference there to there. But the frame behind there is completely in a different place to the frame behind there because it's moved over time. Sort of twisted. Obviously, I've got to put the bottom in quite straight. Um, same, you see it here, to be honest with you. The more you look down, the more you realise it's just in and out. And not only is it in and out, it's up and down. Which I knew yesterday when I did the track saw. And you'll see that I've put the track saw back on this. So yeah, I'm just going to splice these little bits in now, which is going to take time, but it won't take too much time. And then I'm going to jump over to this side. I might not get these bits done today. I'd almost rather run them out in the workshop, to be honest with you, rather than trying to do it here, but we'll see. Um, we'll just go in an hour early and do it. Do it out of some Sapili as well, which I've got plenty of in the workshop. And I'll get the gate done today. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll put wood. Scraped all this back and put a hardener on it. I showed you that yesterday, didn't I? So I've got I've got picked up enough material. Yeah, you know, spin you around. Picked up enough material to sort that, but it's just bloody hot. You can start even standing here. You can see how far out the bloody window is. You know, I'm just trying to create a sort of straightish line along the bottom. So actually, I've done a pretty good job. Let's let's document that, Matt. I want to document something fucking good, right? Yeah, I've got it quite straight along the bottom, considering how far out it was. If you look at how straight I've got that one. And then look at that one, which is the original. I don't know if the camera's picking how bent that is up. Even down here, even this side bit. Nothing straight. So yeah, I'll splice them bits in now. Um, and then whether or not I'll time lapse me splicing these bits in. Fucking okay, hell, this bit's going to be fun. I've got half a mind. Oh, I've got to do it. See, like, even here, look different profiles i was got half one just put a bit in all the way along but it will show that's the problem i've had there I'll try and show you it now actually i had to put so rather than just coming from there to there piece of timber i've had to put two bits in because this is a different profile not profile different sticks out different to that same here you see i'll cut a little triangle piece in underneath and then that piece um yeah. Oh well. It's time consuming, but at least I'm doing it right. Yeah, and I got held off. I don't, know, I don't think I've got rain tomorrow, so I think I'm going to get some putty back on the windows as well. I don't know if I'm down to do this. Maybe we'll decorate this. Or we can just go on that. I'm not breaking all the bloody putty out. Right. Um, yeah. At least the weather's nice. I'll right, speak in a bit. Right, good morning. It's Thursday morning. Uh, I haven't filmed much uh, thus far because I've been just fanning around. Um, so basically, I finished yesterday. I'll show you what I got to yesterday. Before whoever cares. I actually managed to get all this in over here. This bit. I've just got to shave the pegs off and that. It's all glued. Splice me bits in. Um, same along here. And now I've covered in some bits that are just sometimes you'll, you know, in order to get a decent fix in, you'll smash it in, a decent contact, you'll just smash it in, then shave it off with a chisel afterwards. Other times you can get a nice, you know, I've used the track so we can get a nice, neat finish. And it's solid. Trip over the extension lead. Uh, I did the gate as well yesterday and finished it this morning. So that's what I've been doing. So the gate, you can see. We've replaced all the beading, we've chopped out the rot and we'll put some uh, epoxy in there. Um, I've extended that round the style, screwed it in there, screwed it there, screwed it there, glued the head out of it. Fresh bits of timber where it's rotten, fresh bit in there, you see I've just pocket screwed it. Um, I just decided that was the strongest method, it's, it's only really a brace. Then we put the beading in, um, it's actually come out really, it actually looks quite nice with the beading in there. So there's a tiny bit of rot on there. And what I've done is I've whacked some silicone behind it, but not on the bottom. Just in case anything ever gets in, at least it can come out again. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not really. It's not, the gate's, it's actually made with biscuit joints. Biscuit, uh, yeah, biscuit joints. I'm struggling with the word. This is a bit odd. Um, so what am I doing this morning? So I've been finishing that. And then I've been making these, made these on the, um, made them on the uh, 
table saw and miter saw always make more than enough. Um, the profile is different on each corner, unfortunately. So this profile is slightly different to this profile and it's just been fudged. So I've done this one, pelleted it, screwed into there, glued onto there, glued onto there, and they're actually cut at um, 45s. I cut them square the other day just to inspect the wood really, just to get rid of it. Let it dry out a bit. I've put some hardener in there and actually it's not too bad. You can see that's a hard one, that's a soft one. And you can actually almost see they're a different profile. It's not a lot. So what I'll do now, now I've got them made, I think I'll try, because we're in the shade here, I think I'll try and whack the camera somewhere here and just film, show you how I actually fit those, because it might be of some interest. It's kind of, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way that I was sort of shown to do it and it makes sense. I didn't, it was quite labour intensive the first time someone showed me it, but um, actually, it, I just done it on that side and it ran quite smoothly. This one won't when I film it, let's be honest. Nothing ever does when I film it. Right, so I'll whack you on the tripod and we'll, um, we'll do that. Oh, and then I've got a lady to open up all the windows, so I'm going to start attacking the windows, but I don't know if I'm going to get all them done today because they're all bloody rebated and I haven't got a rebate plane. So I don't know how I'm going to tackle that. Um, where hopefully you can just plane the face and not the inside. Yeah, I'll go through that and get them on the bench. Yeah, it'll probably take me an hour to get one out because they're going to be bloody flattered, aren't they? Right, okay. Let's do a bit of filming. Right, it's Friday. I haven't updated you. Um, basically, you missed the bit where I got in scaffolding to take all these windows out and uh, shoot them all back in and uh, do the chop out for the um, chop out where the mortars and tenons have failed and put screws into the end. If you can just see that, um, yeah, and fill them with. Uh, polyurethane glue I've just had the scaffolding down now so yeah uh yeah basically I'm not going to film me dancing around up there on the ladder am I let's be honest um right so it's going to rain in about three or four hours so I am up against it so I'm not doing no filming today what I've done is I've chopped all these back sanded them back uh and I've scraped 90% of the joints out that are failing and then same at the top uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do these, these, this is the uh, the sealant I got in the end, the wood repair. I couldn't get the care repair that I put on the screen the other day because like all 
bloody merchants. They don't do online stock checks. So when they said they've got it, at, I think it was Brewers, I can't remember now, um, online, I rang up and they were like, yeah, yeah, we stock it. And then just before I went on that morning, I thought, I better just make sure they've actually got in stock what I want. Hang on, no, they ain't got it in stock. They all the same. That's why we end up, that's why tradesmen end up going to Wix and B&Q because they've got online stock check. Um, even Howden's announced they've got some online ordering system. They don't tell you if they've got the stock. Um, yeah, it just drives me crazy. Really. I think Travis is used to do something, but yeah, it was never really that good. Um, right, anyway, not in my area anyway. So I went for this one. This is one I could get in a couple of days. Um, there's a few YouTube videos on it and stuff as well. So I was quite confident with it. I have really good reviews. Um, it's a two part. What I like about this advertised, well, actually, what I'll do is I'll use it. Uh, like I said, I've only got a couple of hours. We've got clouds on the horizon. I've got to get this filled and I've got to get some putty in. So I'm, what I'll do is I'll get it all done. I'm going to be hit back next week doing some bits around the back. So I might do a full on video on it. But if not, I'll definitely today do a review on it um, based on what I think pros and cons really. And uh, I was on uh, YouTube last night. One of these uh, one of these chaps, I've just, just made me think. I've got, he, he, had, um, he had a silicon gun and he was going, oh, top tip. You know, they do these carpenters of the year out there giving you all these top tips. If you want a bit of wood cutting, use a saw. Basically, he was like, yeah, what I do with my silicon is I just let the silicon go off. And then when I want to use it again, I just pull out the hard bit and then reuse it. 400 likes. That's a top tip. Like, you know, if you're watching this video and you know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to name him, and you liked it, don't want you. I don't want you watching this. If that's what you're going to be thinking. Um, yeah, and then I think what I'm, what I'm curious is I've hardened this. I'm curious to see how good that uh, free C sealant stuff is going in little tiny bits. It's designed to not slump up to 60 mil, so that to me suggests it'd be quite, quite, you know, sort of hard to get fine. I want to see how good a fine fill is, and I want to see how easy it sounds, which I'm not going to be able to review today. Yeah, so unfortunately, this is going to be all the filming I've done on this job, which is not a lot, I know, but, you know, it was just really hard to... I just set myself a target. When you've been on holiday for a week and you come back, you just want to hit the ground running, don't you? And also, I'm, I'm working around the weather on this. It's going to change massively next week. And this is quite, you know, it don't look like I've done a lot, but that's a lot, you know, that's that's times two, all this, if it's raining every 20 minutes, isn't it? Um, right, okay. Squeeze a little bit. Right, that's it. As, right, as promised, that's it. End of the video. Um, I've done all the the um, all that filling with that product. I'll put a picture up on the screen, even though I've showed it earlier. Um, now I'm just going to talk about how that went. Basically, I can't I can't speak for its longevity, and, I, and equally I can't actually speak for its um, how it sounds. But if you watch next week's video, um, you'll uh, you'll see how it sounds, won't you? So, you know, as if, if I planned it, I didn't, I'm just a little bit, I'm actually behind on my work. But anyway, um, yeah, so I didn't do a lot of filming as well. Basically, it's going to rain in about an hour and it's been saying it's going to rain almost every day and it keeps getting put back and you can just feel there's going to be a thunderstorm. And I just thought, oh man, I need to get so far on this job. Now I've just got a couple of little bits to do, which I'll pick off and I'll do a bit more filming on. Like one is changing the weather bar on the door. Can't point to it there. Another one's changing a little lintel bit around the back, and then there's a also a like a bit on like a secret gutter on the conservatory. I think that's it. Apart from going around making sure this is all okay and just double checking. Um, so there's not really a great deal left actually. Now this stuff, I can't compare it to the repair care stuff which I put on the screen at the beginning of the week, and I'll put up now um because i've never used it but what i can say is it's pretty much about half the price um well close to half the price but equally also you don't have to have a special gun you can just use an ordinary cartridge gun so what you do is the two canisters that i showed earlier you put you you squeeze part a out and then you squeeze part b out in equal measure you can buy a special gun that will do equal measures but I did the whole tube in about six or seven goes. And by the time I got to the end, I, 
I, I emptied it, both guns for my last um, go, and I was only a little bit out. So, or you could, I suppose, squeeze it into a tube, into a turbo or something. But yeah, oh, yeah, as far as I'm, as far as I can see, they they all they all appear the same. So basically, you put that onto a board, then you mix it. Probably takes about a minute to mix it to get it all an even colour. The only thing is, you do have to really look closely because there's little flecks in there. And the first one I didn't, and I noticed it was a bit rubbery when I was putting it on. Um, however, after that, it's an amazing product. And it goes really far. Because you're buying two cartridges, so you're getting basically 600 mil. Um, you're getting a lot more than what you get in the two-part filler. You know, the beauty of this as well, like its main selling point for me is the fact that it goes on so fine. Um, you can literally do the finest of fills. Um, and there's no sort of crumbing up on the edge. It's almost like um, a really, really wet grip fill, like proper grip fill, you know, the old, the original grip fill. Um, but it doesn't skin over, it stays wet. It's that sort of, like, it's almost a bit elasticy. Which sounds awful, but once you get used to that, I and I used I'll put these filling knives up. I use those; they're real flexible. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The and my recommendation would be this as well: use one filling knife to apply and mix it, and then use a separate filling knife that you keep clean and just wipe off, maybe with a rag, um, to shape it. Because you can. I've done the edge of that gate. I've done you. You know when you do filler it's really hard to get it right in one go you have to sort of sometimes put a bit of excess in then sand that off and then do the other side with this you can sort of mold it and shape it and you can do a really good job of it as well and that's my first attempt i believe you want to do a good job because i think it will dry like granite that's my only concern like grip fill so you really want to try and get it quite accurate um that was a really hard job to do it on as well because there's so many bits and bobs and different, you know, profiles. If you're just doing standard filling, oh, mate, I'll just fill in screw holes. Um, as a negative, it does say no shrink, no slump and all that. I don't know why. Every time I buy a new product, I go, oh, yeah, no shrink, no slump. It's all bullshit. It will do. Um, I don't think it will properly shrink, but it does slump a bit and it does... Like I did some deep holes, and when when I went back over there, I took a bit of excess off after about a minute or so. Um, I think that's just part of it. You know, you can't have something that's gonna, you know, obviously it's it's gonna want a little bit. It has a little bit of play. Um, the the other stuff, the repair care, that's got a pot life of twenty five minutes. They say, and it dries in four hours. This stuff's got a pot life of twenty minutes and dries in about seven to eight hours, and that is accurate because. I've, that's been on about two hours now and it's only just starting to firm up so as a negative you're going to struggle to if you're doing a one window repair like you're just going off to do one feature window or one feature door or a sash window you're going to really really struggle with this stuff to get it done in a day you're going to have to pretty much have it on first thing in the morning um whereas that other stuff you could have it on by nine ten and you know you can sand it at the end of the day um yeah that's the only negative really worth a go i think i think it's so i've done the whole of that house which is every bottom mortise and tenon on every window which is like two four eight, 64 windows i actually priced it per window but i meant per opening hopefully He's not sitting there thinking, bloody hell, it's going to charge me 64 times what I priced rather than 64 times one, two, three, four, whatever, five or six, seven. Um, it'd be nice if I could charge you 64 times, wouldn't it? But anyway, um, yeah, got off point there, just thinking about something else. Basically, um, it's done 64 windows, bottom mortise and tenons, and filling the whole bottom section of those bays which is included in the 64 windows, but there's more at the bottom. Then just some odd deep holes and the gate, and I've used a tube and a quarter. So I think it's like, I think it cost me like 25 quid for two tubes, something like that, maybe 30 quid. Um, yeah, so I've used a tube and a quarter. You, you would, I probably would have used three of the epoxy of the two-part wood fillers. Uh, you know what I mean, I'll put them up there, those ones. I probably would use two or three of those. So yeah, value for money. I basically, you can put the you can put the lid back on 
um, do it over Stanley cartridge gun. They're part of the toolbox now. Like if they sand all right Monday, Tuesday, they're amazing. I'll be keeping. It. I'll probably be filling all my stuff with them because they're actually really nice to work with. They don't sort of. They're so fine. So when you when you get into the end, you know when you mix those two parts, and you get to the end of your mix, and it, and sometimes bits like on your filling knife have gone off quicker because you've overworked it. That no difference. So when you get to the end of the mix, you can just scrape the board and just get, and you're amazing how much you're just laying flat on that board. Scrape it off, put it back onto the board again. You've got another lot and you can just keep going. There's no crumbing on it. You know, it's not like powdery. So there isn't any, um, or, or it's not brittle. So there's no, it doesn't crumb up and, and become irritating. It's just gooey. The only, the only thing is when you get bits in it from, you know, the, uh, from the windows and stuff. So I've sort of thought I was doing different piles. Um, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry it wasn't a very good week for filming. First week back off holiday. I've had a bit of a, I addressed it in one of my videos. I'm having a bit of a wobble at the moment. But um, yeah, onwards and upwards. Next week, do a bit more uh, filming. And then I'll be on, I've got to make some doors and windows. So that's workshop time. And you know by now if I'm on, if you watch this, my workshop filming's better because I'm not in front of the customer for start. Um, and I'm control the environment controlled. Um, right, see you later.